Well, it's the little lady detective. What do you need? I found Lori. She was hiding in the caboose. Oh, yeah? She disappeared because she wanted to see who'd find her first, which is why she left that clue behind. That slug? I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's why I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat. But I thought, hey, why not give somebody else a shot? And you came through. Nice job. Thank you. But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? But just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. How did you and Lori meet? We met at a party in New York. Nice girl. Not a lot upstairs, but nice girl. She seems to have a thing for your eyes. Yeah, she always told me they were... I mean, she told me once that she thought they were very, uh, you know, brown. What do you think happened to Jake Hurley? He probably died trying to work that mine of his all by himself. But I'll let you in on a secret. I'm onto something that could crack this case wide open. You know where the mine is? Sorry, can't go into detail. Let's just say that thanks to yours truly, what happened to Jake Hurley won't be a mystery much longer. Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Not a problem. Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works.
always your friend, Thomas Wilson. Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I'd better keep this. There, all done. I guess Camille liked to collect dolls. Again, just checking to see whether you were able to find out the name of those dancing shoes yet. Your wish is our command, but hang on to your hat. The name is a real mouthful. The shoes were made by Chaussette Chateauillant, C H A U S S E T T E S, C H A T O Y A N T E S. That's French for shimmering socks. Apparently, if you were into dancing in the 1870s, that was the company to get your shoes from. Chaussette Chateauillant. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting us help. I discovered this cabinet full of old dolls in the caboose. Old dolls make my skin crawl. Whose were they? They belonged to Jake's wife, Camille. Jake mentioned them in his letter to his niece. They could have been 
and Jake's, you know. I mean, they never had a child of their own, right? So maybe after Camille died, he went a little bonkers. Oh, Bess. Hey, I'm just trying to think outside the box here, okay? Something it wouldn't hurt you to do from time to time, little Miss No Imagination. You know, maybe I'll just put this paintbrush down, walk out that door, and let you do this all by yourself. No! You've got to keep painting. If I don't get this done by tomorrow, I'll be grounded for a month. I was just kidding about your imagination. It's wonderful. You're wonderful. Very, very wonderful. That's more like it. Tino Balducci definitely has a thing for Lori Gerard. So there's some kind of mutual attraction thing going on between them? Something's going on between them. I'm not really sure what. Well, find out. I mean, that's a mystery worth pursuing. To heck with this Jake Hurley stuff. You'd give up the possibility of finding gold for gossip, Bess? For gossip this good? Oh, yeah. Catch you later. Okay. What's going on? It's been great talking to you. Helping people is what I'm all about. Teddy Eberhardt. Nancy. What's with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Yep, she's holed up in the caboose, and as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mine. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori, you got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, Joe, quit pouting. Want any help? Are you kidding? You bet I do. Now you're talking. Balducci wants me to share everything I find out about Jake Hurley with him. I'll bet he does. He just doesn't want you to show him up again. Yeah, he wants you to do all the legwork so at the last minute, BAM! He can swoop in and grab all the credit. I wouldn't tell him a thing, Nance. Unless it's to get lost. It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. Very true. Not necessarily. Jake might not have told him the exact location. Maybe he just had him drop him off somewhere nearby. Well, still, we'd be way ahead of the game if we knew where that drop-off point was. If the engineer had any surviving relatives, we may be in luck. The guy died more than a hundred years ago. How are we supposed to find out his name? Maybe Charlena What's-Her-Face could tell us how to go about it. Good idea, Frank. I'll ask her. I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Buell? Joe, show her! Show her what? That old picture we found! Uh, 
Okay. We found this on the bookshelf. See? Buell Supplies and Pawn Shop. That's gotta be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Well, that's where we're headed, so let's just hope for the best. Right. See you later. You better. Sadie Crawford. Yes? I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. And you won. Congratulations. The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is that all, dear? Did you know that Lori wants to be a romance novelist? <sighs> Doesn't everyone. Have you discussed any of her ideas with her? No. Could we please talk about something a little more pleasant? How would I go about finding out the name of Jake's train engineer? If you're smart, you'd ask me. And because my work is going surprisingly well, during my next break, I'll log on to my archives at home and see what I can turn up. That'd be great, thank you. Whoever invented the cellular modem, that's whom you should thank, dear. Well, I'll let you go. All right, then. Somebody must have thrown the emergency brake. The question is, did somebody throw the brake or something? Oh, Joe, now you sound like Lori. Hey, I was the first one on the scene and I saw no one. Who was the next person on the scene? John Gray. Then Balducci came bursting through one door while Frank and the engineer came through the other. Boy, was that guy ticked. He said the train could have derailed. He reset the brake, muttered a few choice words, then headed back to the engine just as you and Lori showed up. Everybody was there except Charlena. I don't think she left her laptop the whole time. Do you think she could have thrown the brake and snuck back to her laptop without your seeing her? Not likely, but possible, I guess. The question is, why? What did she or anybody else stand to gain by stopping the train? Answer? Nothing. Which is why I think we should at least consider the possibility that something less human in nature may be at work here. Ah, oh, Joe. I'm going to see if Balducci's done dusting for fingerprints. Catch you later. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes? I hear that Tino and you used to be an item. How did you know that? I'm a good detective, remember? We went out a couple of times, yeah. As for why we stopped going out, you'd have to ask him. Do you have any idea who threw the emergency brake? I know exactly who did it. How do you know? Well, who else could it be? Camille. None of us has any reason to stop the train, but Camille? She doesn't want us to find Jake's mine, so she's going to do whatever she can to keep its location a secret. She is dead, you know. Well, duh. That's why I know it's her. What's more, your friend that Jim Harley guy? Not Jim, Joe. Joe Hardy. Yeah, well, he thinks it's Camille, too. He just doesn't have the guts to say so. We'll talk some more later. I'll be waiting. <laughs>